Hi friends, it's Lisa Ziegler. Happy to be here with you on this incredibly hot, thick, wet, humid Friday afternoon. Welcome to the Gardener's Workshop Live. And today we're gonna do some interesting talk because you know what I think a lot of maybe people that aren't so business focused on don't realize that these last weeks of your season is like the profit time, y'all. And so everything you can do to extend is literally money in your pocket. So we're gonna talk about that. So I'm still planting sunflowers and I'll tell you about our travesty here um, that happened. And um, we're also gonna be talking about soil blocking. I'm not gonna demonstrate soil blocking today. I'm getting lots of questions about which size blocker to use, what about which mix or soil do I use? And then also they're confused about the timing of how soil blocking grows a little quicker in soil blocks, transplants do. So we're gonna talk about all that stuff. So we're gonna have a really fun show here today. And um, I'm still going at it strong on our sunflowers, friends. So um, we're gonna start it off with that. Um, but first, I just want to remind everybody that you can find so many resources over at thegardenersworkshop.com. And I actually put the link at the head of this post, which you probably can't see until after we're done, um, where I would love for you to have my free webinar, um, The Cool Flowers Refresher. You know, we are dead in to cool flower season. That means cool season hardy annual, perhaps planting, for many of us are starting, but also preparing for everybody. Um, so I'd love for you to have that webinar. And there's that and so much more over there. And I wanna remind everybody too that I have a podcast and we just had a like podcast posting extravaganza. We posted many of the Clubhouse recordings that we've done to my podcast, which was quite a job. And also the other thing that's now on my podcast is um, the cool, let's see, the Cool Season Flower Chronicles. That was a five part video series about the most questions that I get most often. But now you can listen to it in your car, going down the road or out in the field on your favorite podcast app, um, because we put the audio on the podcast. And friends, it would help me so much if you would post a review. If you're enjoying it, if it's um, something that is helping you, I would just love for you to share those words. The more reviews I get, the more they show my podcast to people that are kind of looking around to what to listen to. So with that said, I am gonna start with our sunflowers here. And so I am still, you know, like, um, what was it? three weeks ago, we upped our numbers. So for those of you that have never joined us before, we plant sunflowers every week. We start about four weeks before our last spring frost. Um, and sometimes we push it a little bit before that. Um, and we start sunflowers indoors and I'm gonna talk you through the process. Um, but this is a way um, sunflowers can float a bouquet business, a florist business, um, a supermarket business, and um, so it's really a great way. And thank you, Jessica, that just reminded me. And friends, if any of my students are on here of any of our online courses, please comment and use the little sunflower emoji, and that kind of helps people to recognize each other. And put where you're from, Jessica just did it, and put where she is in Kansas. And um, that just really helps people to connect with each other. And we love seeing how many of our students are on here. Um, Y'all, I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. Um, we have to do our tape first. My table is kind of, actually it's my tripod. Isn't quite in the right place. There we go. So now that can be in the middle and I have room for this. So as I was saying, um, so we start them every week. That, that allows you to have sunflowers to cut every week. Enormous cash crop for us. Um, I'll say it again, as I've said it, how many times, y'all? A thousand. It bought me a $31,000, $32,000, $33,000 John Deere. Sunflowers from one year, if you do the math. We did um, 
26 weeks of 1,200 sunflowers a week. Um, wholesale price is about a buck 30 each, um, so you can figure that out. That's a serious crop is what I really just want to, you know, drive home for everybody. So we plant them once a week. Um, now we don't plant so many. We are no longer in high production, but all summer we've been planting three trays. Now that we're heading into fall, and I'll say that again, sunflowers and fall are like peanut butter and jelly, y'all. They just go together. And y'all, I'm just loving y'all posting. Um, there you go, Janice Harris, that paid for her family. I remember Janice is in Canada and she brought her entire family, three kids and a husband from Central Canada all the way over to Raleigh, North Carolina, where that was. I don't know why my screen just went a little dark. My phone is charging and it's fully charged. Hmm, maybe that was the light. Okay, so see, sunflowers are really serious business. So we've done three all summer, but now that we're heading into fall, we've upped it to four trays because we surely do not want to be short. We use painter's tape and our favorite little outdoor garden marker. This does not go away from UV rays and moisture. You can find that at thegardenersworkshop.com, which is my website. We only sell what, what I use, so it's really easy to make your choices. So this week, we're gonna start two trays of gold light. Um, that's kind of become my favorite. We grow Pro Cuts because they're 55 to 60 days from seed planting until when they bloom. They can be a little slower in the fall as the days get shorter and the conditions just change. Um, so gold light, which is one of the pro cut colors. What is today, y'all? Gosh, I can't believe it's the end of August. Do you know August, September, October? Christmas will be over in four months. Oh my goodness. Um, the gold light is the one that's the yellow like my shirt with a lime green, chartreuse green center. Um, not only is that a super hot color now, but it also, why we are starting so much of it, is it is also, it just brightens it up. Um, yellow is, you know, a great, great color. Most sunflowers are orange, um, but this one is really yellow in that green center, so it just really makes a big, big difference. And then we're also gonna start some sun fills Sun fill sunflowers are not pro cuts, but they are also 55 to 60 days. And they are grown, you have to go to our website and look at them. We don't grow them to bloom like a sunflower because they don't really have very attractive blooms. Some people love them. Um, but we grow them because they have this, these like layers of sepals. That's the green, um, just leaf parts of the bud around it. They're totally and completely beautiful, y'all. Um, it's like the filler we have all been waiting for, y'all. Um, it's a filler that you can actually time and have it every single week. So we start some of those. So first, so I use the blue painter's tape and I've just written on there which, which colors they are and the date so we can keep straight. It's amazing how easy it is to screw these up when they're all like some are two weeks old and some are three weeks old to, for the girls to be able to plant them in a patch together. Um, so I start, we start in 128 plug trays. Um, that's what a, many commercial growers do. It's just easier, a better stand to plant, less fussing. Um, and so what is in this is a mix of 50-50 soil of any kind, any kind of potting mix. You do not have to have anything special. 50% potting mix and 50% finished compost. Key word that it's cooked, finished. Um, and that means it doesn't have any weed seeds in it. I can tell that Bobo used some, re you know what these are? Y'all, this is a sad story. I'm gonna tell it right now. See that? Let's see, today is Friday, Tuesday. Um, just out of the blue, I'm sure it was a rabbit or a cardinal, um, ate literally down to those little nubs all of our four trays of sunflowers. Four trays. I mean, clean. we look at the tray and it's like, where'd all of our sunflowers go? We couldn't even see them, those little nubs. Anyway, 
this time of the year, it's not, it's prudent perhaps to provide protection. And we have now put bulb crates upside down over our seedlings that we just, the ones that we started here together last week, which germinated 100%, which are now unfortunately sitting outside, but they are, they have a bulb crate, which is these black crates um, that bulbs are shipped to us in. And then over top of that, we have row cover. Um, so we weren't sure if it was a bird or a rabbit. If it's a rabbit, that'll stop them. But if it's a bird, they can pop under that little teeny edge and get in there. So we're trying to figure it out. So we lost a whole week, y'all. This is what happens. This is what really happens. Um, so these trays are full of that mix. And so what Bobo did was she dumped those trays of soil back into the sunflower bin, which is perfectly fine to do it, except now we have all these roots in here because the plants never got planted. You know what I mean? Usually it's just, you know, not quite so much. Um, anyway, I'm just annoyed over the whole situation of those whoever ate my sunflowers. If I'd have had a fly swatter, I'd have fixed them. Not really, but you feel that way, right? I mean, we are gonna be so mad in like eight weeks when we have no sunflowers and I'll kind of forget about this um, and not realize what in the heck happened. All right, so sunflowers, we're doing gold lights. I'm actually doing two of them. I'm just dropping a seed on the surface of each cell and I'll, you'll see the rest of the story here. Um, and what will happen is after I'm done sowing all these seeds today, we will, I will take them into my grow room, put them on the floor, water them in really well, and then because, well now we're back to hot heat, um, because we suffered earlier from a really cool week with a lot of rain and our um, sunflowers didn't germinate well because I just put them on the floor of my grow room, which, which normally works beautifully because the room gets really warm um, and stays hot. Um, so we lost, we didn't lose, poor germination one week. Well, then about two weeks ago, the complete opposite happened. We got so sunny and hot that we toasted them. So now we've become more reliable and we are um, putting our trays onto the seedling heat mat, leaving the door ajar so it doesn't get so hot in there. So now, do I need to bring y'all down? Maybe just a little bit more. Sorry, y'all. Okay, so now I'm just pushing, putting my finger onto the sunflower and just pushing it down in. Y'all, this is such a quick job if you're not talking to people on Facebook at the same time that you're doing it. Um, so I'm just pushing the seeds down in there. Sunflowers germinate best when they are in darkness and covered with soil. So if you looked down into these cells after this step, you would see that you can probably still see I just don't have my trays right today, y'all. Having trouble. Um, you would see that the sunflowers are still showing, but do not worry about putting more soil on top. You do not need to do that. Um, when you water, that's gonna wash the soil off the walls of these cells, and that's gonna cover, where are we gonna put this? Um, that, oh, I'm gonna stack them. All right. Sorry, y'all. I'm just discombobulated today. I am. Um, what happens is from week to week, instead of being able to leave my setup up, of course they do flowers in here. And I had to dig up, I had to go find my chair, go find my stuff, get, go find a tripod. <laughs> anyway. Um, so we are losing my tape. Um, so we're doing two trays of gold light this week because that's that great color that just brightens everything. So we're gonna water them in and then we're gonna pop them onto a seedling heat mat just like you do every kind of um, seed starting, right? Um, and then once 50 to 75% of them are popping, you're gonna take them from there um, and depending on, and you, it all depends on your critter situation outside. Normally we would pop them right outside um, onto the porch into full sun 
and just water them every day just like we do our other seedlings and then plant them. Um, but now because of the varmint pressure, I'll probably, and because my plant room is literally empty now, because of course we haven't started cool flowers yet, it's too early. Um, so these guys will go under light and then we'll move them outside underneath those bulb crates um, when they're probably about a week old. So they go outside when they're about a week old and we plant them in the garden when they're two to three weeks old. The key to when we know when to plant is when we tug on the stem and the entire cell of soil just comes right out and you don't feel like you're ripping the stem from the roots, that's when it's time to plant them. Um, that makes planting go super fast and efficient and quick um, and that's how, what we do. So two to three weeks is typically. Um, and you want, if your sunflowers are not growing strong roots so you don't feel like you ever get that strong root system that's attached to your stem, um, that's usually a growing condition issue. Um, oftentimes it can be cool conditions, not having enough warmth. Putting them onto a seedling heat mat will really speed up your germination and also induce, um, increase the, the quality of your root system. Y'all, there is so much stuff in this soil. It's kind of a mess. Um, and then we plant them in the garden. So when we plant them in the garden, we, while we do use the Bio360, most of the time we do not use it on sunflower beds. Because um, if you think about that, these sunflowers, let's just say, are 60 days till they bloom from what we're doing right now. Um, if they're in this tray for 20 days, they're a third of the way through their life. We just don't feel like it's warranted um, to waste those resources, woman power, um, to get beds made and put film on them. So we till the beds, put in the organic um, dry fertilizer, which you can find on our website um, that we use. We sell the same. Till it in, and then Bobo uses the flower support netting um, for spacing. It doesn't stay down. She rolls that out, and it's got six-inch holes, and she plants. We now plant five rows in a 30-inch bed, um, and they're basically six inches apart. Um, and we literally hand water, and that's pretty much what they get. We ha get a lot of rain here in southeastern Virginia, but if you don't get a lot of rain, then you might not want to do that. You would probably want to put irrigation down in water, but we don't have to do that. Yeah, um, sunflowers are pretty, um, a pretty hardy little guys, um, but they do need to be well established, and of course, we have some pretty nice high organic matter which means it retains moisture um sunflowers all right y'all we have to do a switcheroony here what we need to do is to move this stuff out of my way to get our next tray you know you get a lot of respect for the people on tv cooking after you have to do all this stuff and figure out what the heck you are doing and what you aren't doing. All right, now we are on to Pro Cut Mix. You know, if you don't mark the trays, it does run into a little bit of trouble. Um, and I've done it both ways, trust me. I've forgotten to put the tape on before. It just causes, especially if you have other people helping you, not everybody, um, knows or recognizes, you know, stuff. All right, so the bouquet mix is one of our custom mixes. And we mix it because it has, because we love the four orange Pro Cuts. Um, it's got the Pro Cut Orange, which is the standard industry. When we were growing 1,200 sunflowers a week for all those years, all I grew was Pro Cut Orange. I didn't grow any of the other colors. Um, too much chaos to figure out which color is that bucket when you're selling to florist and anyway. Um, so the Pro Cut Orange is the industry go-to. In addition to that, we mixed in Pro Cut Orange XL, which is a deeper color orange, and Pro Cut Horizon, 
which is the one that faces more upright, which is the best ever, y'all. If you haven't grown it, you really need to. Um, and then also Pro Cut Brilliance. Brilliance is an orange with a yellow halo, it seems like, right around the brown disc. They literally glow. It's like one of those types of colors out in the garden that just really, is just indescribable, and you really can't capture it on an image. Um, I have tried a gazillion times. It's just, it's just really, really beautiful. So that, this is these four mixed together. Um, so you literally, we call it the bouquet mix because it would be a nice little bit of a variety um, when you're making bouquets, or you can literally make a bouquet out of this. Um, so what I wanna really talk about is what my plan is for going longer into the season. So we do two programs we do a members only market and we do a bouquet subscription. And the longer I have flowers to allow those markets to go, our customers are there, they want them. And um, so they, we try to not do any straight bouquets of sunflowers um, in the latter part of the summer, like if we have a desperate season or something, I mean, all kinds of things have happened. One time, Suzanne was sick and I didn't have anybody to make bouquets and there was no way I could do it. So we just gave straight bunches of sunflowers to our customers and they loved it. But we try not to do that in late summer because we save it till the end of the season. So what that means is that if my sunflowers, if we don't have anything else to put with these sunflowers, we have enough mix, just like this, or a mix of all of them, that we can give our customers, you know, 15 to 20 sunflowers, depending on which market or which um, price range they select, and make our, make our season extended. Because y'all, you know, every, everybody, everybody else gets paid in this business. You have to pay for your seeds, you have to pay for your bulbs, you have to pay for all your stuff. You have to pay for the fertilizer. You have to pay for your supplies. And it's what's left over is what the business owner gets. And y'all, this is the icing on the cake, is if you can add three to four weeks of flowers that are just really beautiful and different and really seasonal, you'll be in good shape. So, we got, all right, we got the pro cuts. Um, so that is my plan. Um, we hope that these sunflowers will extend past when some of our other stuff um, is kind of tired, you know? And so we'll see how it goes. You know, we also have some kale, the ornamental kale planted, so we'll see if we have anything to go with it. So if you guys have any questions about soil blocking or sunflowers, please just post them in. I'll do those last um, after I wanna talk a little bit about, and we're gonna look at some soil mix um, but we'll talk about soil blocking because we really are getting lots and lots of questions and phone calls and emails and DMs and, um, and I understand because everybody's revving up for seed starting, right? For, um, cool flowers. And depending on where you live, you may or may not have already started. Um, uh, my first expected frost is, um, mid-November, and I have learned, um, I've learned that because the weather, I mean, weather's crazy since I've been farming for 24 years, but what I've learned in the last probably five years is our fall lasts longer, and y'all, there is nothing worse than starting your cool flowers either too early um, or you start them on what you think is on time, but it's still hot, too hot outside to plant them and you watch your beautiful transplants grow into ugly, rangy, stretching transplants. So I tend to always err on starting later than earlier. Um, so normally I would start my cool flowers for my November 15th first expected frost. Um, just making sure this isn't a tray I've already sown. It's not. Um, I would start typically, so that is, that means I should be planting them 
either mid-September to October 1st, right? Well, October 1st around here, we can still have 90 degree days. Um, and so I'm starting my cool flowers later and later each year. And, you know, my feeling is, is that I am much more um, really happy about starting later than earlier. So we only start our cool flowers about three to four weeks before it's time to plant them with the exception of some of the slow growers, which for us, the only one I can think of right now is Rudbeckias. They're pretty slow to grow. So those we won't start quite that late. But again, you have a lot of wiggle room on all those things you can transplant. Um, it's the direct seeded stuff you have to really nail. So um, that's why everybody is just throwing in the questions on soil blocking. And uh, we have so many new soil blocking folks and it's definitely a learning curve and I'm gonna help you get through some of those things um, so that you can actually be prepared and have what you want um, to start them with, what supplies you'll need to, to have on hand that depending on where you are, where you can find them. And so this is the tray of sun fill and I can't tell you how these babies have saved us, particularly in the spring. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to post them and I will come back and answer those after I'm done chit-chatting here. All right. So I don't know if anybody else is hot and tired. It has just been a really long season and this is one of those jobs that's really satisfying. You just have to get your system down Find a good way to get them to germinate with your seedling heat mat, a place to put them, keep them safe from varmints, get them planted out in the garden in a simple, quick, and easy way, um, and just go for it. You know, because you know something that, well, I actually, I got asked, you know, I have three lives a week, so I'm not sure if it was here or wherever it was, but I am not, um, somebody asked, oh my gosh, I didn't think you did it that way. One thing you need to understand about me and my methods is that I do what is the best for the situation. I'm not a purist at anything. Um, I'm not just a soil blocker, obviously. You can see I'm using plug trays right here. Um, I'm not just, that's one of the reasons that I, I have part of my farm is no-till, part of it's conventional. Um, you know, you just have to do what's best for, for me, it's best for the bottom line. I mean, I'm totally considering how much labor does that take? Um, what is the best thing for us to do, um, to take to be, you know, environmentally friendly, which pretty much everything we do, we try to do that. Um, but you just have to be really smart about that and not be a purist. Not if you're in business, anyway. Um, and, you know, be flexible. That's probably the easiest thing and we don't get too caught up. All right, y'all, so I'm pushing the last ones in. So all these are gonna go in the room, get watered, go on a seedling heat mat. Once set 50 to 75% of them have germinated. Um, and then you pop them outside, protect them from varmints. So if we have a minute at the end, I'll take you out there and show you Bobo's little contraption she has set up with the bulb crates with row cover on top of it. Um, and you can find all the pro cuts and jump. We have jumbo packs and regular packs. I have several custom mixes um, and the trays, everything you would pretty much need, right? So now I wanna talk just a little bit about soil blocking and then I'm gonna look at your questions. What time is it? Well, we're kinda of right on time. So a question that I get really, really often is which size blocker to use. And if you're someone um, that's not familiar with blocking, I'll just quick rundown. Um, soil blocking is the way that the Dutch and the English have started seeds for decades and decades. Um, and we import this, these are literally our tools that we use here on the farm. Um, we import these from England and you'll find them on our website. We have soil, we have kits, we sell them individually. Um, we sell a seed starting made easy online course that I do that comes with the kits when you buy the kits. So um, soil blockers make a little block of soil so your seeds are never in a container. 
not only is that super environmentally friendly, um, and I will show you, so I'm gonna show you soil in a minute, but we use these cafeteria type trays as a commercial grower, because first off, you don't wanna put more than one variety of a seed on a tray. So for us, I mean, we do a whole tray, which is 240 blocks of these little small guys. Um, and so it's super environmentally friendly. I'm using the same trays I started with 20 some years ago. Um, so that is a really great thing. Plus you don't have the annoyance of um, black plastic stuff. I mean, as much as I think our plug trays are the best in the world, they still break down. They still rip, they still crack. The sun breaks them down. People leave, people leave them sitting outdoors. If you leave your plastic products sitting outside, obviously you have to when plants are in them, but if you store them sitting outside, that makes them break down even sooner. Um, so you need to um, get those guys inside. So soil blocking has no container. Um, because the roots get so much oxygen, they grow much quicker. That is why we shave a third of the conventional growing time off, which we're gonna talk about um, in just a minute. Um, but there's so many benefits to soil blocking. You have to go to our website, thegardenersworkshop.com. If you go to the Learning Center, there's a, um, when the drop down menu, there's a thing, it's all things soil blocking. We have so many resources talking about it, um, videoing, videos, blogs, um, just everything you can imagine. And um, it's just super space savvy because what a lot of people don't know is I don't have any greenhouses. I don't have any hoop houses. I'm in the middle of the city. I cannot have them. I have started seeds um, inside this building. Actually, I started in my bungalow house for the first, first four years of my, build, of my business life. I started my business in 98. This building was built in 2002. And I started my seeds in my kitchen and in my pantry and in my cellar. Um, small, small space. So it is just really, really um, conducive to small scale farming, which is what I do. Even though when we were at an acre and a half in production for all those years, we produced 10 to 15,000 stems of flowers a week, y'all. Do not think you have to have a lot of space to be a very successful flower farmer. Um, we've proven that. And you know what's good about small space? There's less pathway, less weeds, less, less work, less everything. Um, so soil blocking is pretty darn amazing. So we use, this is the three quarter inch blocker. And we use this 99% of the time for all of our flower seeds and most of our vegetable seeds. The only time I choose to go with the large blocker, this is the two inch blocker, and this has inserts added on, which I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, the only time we use this is when the seed is just simply too small to go in this. Um, because here's why. In a little tray, I didn't even think to bring one, sorry y'all, a small five by seven little foam tray like your hamburger comes on. Two clusters of these little three quarter inches will fit on there. Y'all, that's 40 plants in a very small space. In that same space, only eight of these will fit. So there's the space thing. This larger blocker uses like 12 times the volume of soil than the small one does. So are you getting my point? It's just a lot smarter, a lot um, savvier to use the small block. And we have done it. We go from this small block straight to the garden. And my whole method is outlined um, in the made seed starting made easy, which is only like 20 bucks. Um, it's also in flower farming school. So I'm not gonna teach you everything about soil blocking today. I'm here to say that the way you choose which one is the only time I, be, I vary from using the small one is if the seed literally won't fit in this guy. And so what are some cool flowers that won't fit in this? Um, calendula, pot marigold. Um, it definitely will not fit in here. However, calendula is not a really fussy seed. And because we're commercial growers and we would need a lot of them, we typically plant them in plug trays. Um, but what does need the two inch block are sweet peas. Sweet peas thrive in the two inch blocker, but y'all wait, listen. 
we only start our sweet peas like two weeks before we're gonna plant them. Sweet peas love cool. You would not even dream about starting sweet peas while it's still even in the 70s outside. Um, so the two inch blocker is definitely needed in those instances, but we just don't use it that often. It's the three quarter inch. We only go away from this if its seed is too big to go in there. We typically um, try to reference which soil blocker um, is used. So that is your choice of which one. And now I wanna talk about blocking mix. This is probably one of the most controversial, most talked about, misunderstood parts of soil blocking. First off, I didn't make this recipe up. It's Elliot Coleman's recipe. If anybody wants to go a deep dive on learning about soil blocks, um, read Elliot's book, The Small, The New Organic Market Farmer, I think it's called. I should know it. It's like the first book. It's the book that taught me how to farm. Anyway, I used one of Elliot's recipes, and that's what I used for many, many years. Um, and the way that you make it is you mix, and the recipe is always on our website, y'all. You can find it under the Learning Center, All Things Soul Blocking. Um, it's always there. We usually put it in our catalog. It's always readily and available for anybody that wants to make their own at home. We want you to do what works for you. And there's two different ways you can make the recipe. So the recipe calls for, one recipe makes about 21 cups of blocking mix, and you have a couple of different choices for ways you mix it. Um, so it calls for 16 cups of sifted. You have to sift it, y'all. You cannot believe how many chunks are in peat moss and even in cocoa, um, and definitely in compost. It calls for 16 cups of compost, four cups, I'm sorry, 16 cups of peat moss or cocoa, and four cups of compost. You've gotta sift it. Um, so the cocoa bricks, and I'm just showing you these. Um, if you don't have any experience with these, when I first learned about these years ago, it was like, is this like the best kept secret in gardening and farming? So you drop this brick into two and a half, you put to get a five gallon bucket, put about two and a half gallons of water in and drop this baby in. I like to do it the night before. The next morning when you come out, your bucket is half full of pliable, usable soil. They actually call this potting soil. Um, and so you can use it in pot. We cut it with compost um, when we use it in containers, um, but it works great. But you hear the best thing? You can like store this on a shelf somewhere until the day that you need it, and you always have backup potting soil instead of huge bales, because look at this. You can also buy a bigger brick. This is our grower size brick, and this makes, how much does this make? This 11 pound brick will make approximately 20 gallons. That is four five gallon buckets, y'all. But you can just put this baby in the cabinet or on a shelf somewhere until the day you need it. You wanna know what I did back before I owned a retail garden store, like I do now, an online shop, that I have, you know, I can just drive up there and get what I need. Um, my fear, because it happened to me, was going to start seeds and I didn't have the proper ingredients. Um, I mean, there's nothing like stopping what you're doing, getting in the car and going to search for what it is you need. Um, and when I learned about cocoa bricks, this was one of the first retail products we learned about. Um, when we found out about this and we got some and started using them as mix in our containers and in our blocking mix, totally amazing. You'll find both of those on our website. So that way you don't have to have bales of peat moss just sitting around in the way, moving it 10 times. The other thing that needs to be added to that mix is rock phosphate powder and green sand. Back when I started soil blocking 20 some years ago, both of those items, which are original organic fertilizers, y'all, this is what people used to use before we had all those, they've turned it into like dog food, right? Who can decide which dog food to buy? Um, there's just so many different brands. Well, that's what's happened to fertilizer. And, but back in the day, when you would even go to the big box store, right there next to the bone meal, the little bags of bone meal, would be green sand, 
and rock phosphate powder because it was being used. Well, as fertilizer mixes companies started exploiting all that, um, they went away. So that start, I guess it really happened about 10 years ago. I was catching lots of grief about people, me telling people to soil block and giving them the recipe, but nobody could find green sand and rock phosphate. I mean, I'm telling you, every day we got emails from people desperate or mad. Um, and so that led us about maybe six years ago um, to start buying huge slings from a farm up north of green sand and rock phosphate, have them mix it together, and we now package the nutrient mix for those people that cannot get it. So this is enough to make four, no, eight, wait a minute. This makes eight recipes. Um, and this, along with your cocoa bricks, will have you in business. You just need to find some compost, um, which you typically can find pretty readily at your local garden center or nursery. Um, so that is how you can make your own at home. Um, the key part, too, is you have got to sift it. We do have a sieve on our website for those folks that need it. Um, and check that out. So that's how you can make your own. And I want to show you the difference. And so we have a farm in upstate New York that we purchase um, the blocking mix from. They make soil blocking mix because they soil block. Um, so what I want to show you, and there's just no way to really hit this home on here with, unless if I'd have had a scale here, we could have done it. Um, this is just regular potting mix. This is like what we buy to put in um, our containers and what you would use to mix with compost to do your um, sunflowers with. This is so light and fluffy, so light and fluffy. And so this is not what you should use for making soil blocks. Think about, let's just stop and think about it for just a minute, okay? Soil blocks do not have a container. You want them to bind and hold together. But this mix, the, the one I just showed you that's got all this perlite in it that's made for pots, like that's in our plug tray, we want that to be air and light um, and so that air and water can move through it because it's in a container, right? So this is not what you use. This is a sample of what we do use. This is the ready-made mix. I can't tell you how much heavier this tray is than that one. And it's the same volume of soil. I mean, I measured two scoops onto each one. And it's because this is so much denser. Um, and this, when it's wet, binds and holds together. You can make blocks out of that potting mix that um, so we'll call it potting soil um, that I just showed you. It'll make the blocks, but they don't hold up. And here's the other thing. We don't use sterile anything on this farm. We don't use sterile soil. We're organic growers, right? So we want compost to be in it. Um, and so when folks, we get lots of emails of people saying, mine aren't growing like yours, or they're falling apart when I water. 99.9% .9 of the time when we ask them a couple questions, they're using not the correct blocking mix, or they're, plus they're using a sterile blocking mix, um, or a sterile potting soil or seed starting mix. Um, Y'all, I cannot emphasize enough, you want the living stuff in your soil. There's more good than there is bad. The bad is encouraged by your conditions and you can prevent that. Um, so this is the ready-made mix, which you'll find on our website. We do have a jumbo bag and a regular size bag, but here's the thing. The regular size bag, which is only like five and a half pounds, like 20 cups, will make 600 of these little blocks. The jumbo bag, if memory is serving me, and y'all, I left my purse at home today, so we're not on that good page. Um, I believe it's three to three and a little bit more of the small bags is what's in the jumbo bag. So, y'all, it goes a long way is what I'm telling you. That's why, another reason that I say we steer away from using the big blocker unless we have to. I mean, blocking mix is precious. This is really precious stuff, so you don't want to be using it. So, the recipe is always on our website, y'all. Um, for you to make your own blocking mix at home, 
We have it if you don't want to make it, and we have the components with the exception of compost, which you can buy a bag of compost just about anywhere. Mushroom compost, chicken compost, cow manure compost, as long as it is composted, it's the good stuff at the end, right? So that's what is going on with um, the mix. And here's the last thing I wanna talk about that I'm gonna look at your questions, is how you shave some growing time off. Because these transplants, and y'all, I mean, this is, I have no plants right now to show you, um, but you can just go to my feed or go to our website. There are gobs of images. Um, we grow, when we were in high production, we started and planted up to 100,000 seedlings a year using the soil blocking method because we typically are starting seeds from January to November and planting constantly, right? We didn't have 100,000 at one time. That was the, the system that we had. Um, and we know for a fact that soil blocks grow transplants quicker and it's because they are not in a container. Their roots are getting so much oxygen. It's such a great environment to grow in. When you give them what they want, warm air temperature, the proper amount of water, food on a regular basis after it's germinated, in a room with, with under great grow lights. Um, and you can see some of the, I mean, we grow, 240 plants on this tray that people just can't believe they grow in that little teeny block until they're three to five inches tall and we plant them outside. We do it, y'all. I mean, we're living it. So you gotta check that out. Now, I am gonna bring, I gotta unplug this, and I'm gonna bring you guys around here so I can see what questions we have. Sorry. Once again, I had this set up really great last week, but it got changed. So let me bring you up a little bit higher. Y'all see my flowers over there. Bobo made that for me. It's church flowers for Sunday. That's the benefit of having Bobo. Bobo is an amazing flower arranger. All right, friends, I'm looking back to see if I see some questions. Let me just go back up and just scroll through. So, hey, everybody. Lisa, I mistakenly purchased Lombata Minarda plugs from Ball instead of the perennial Minarda that Dave suggested. Can I still cancel? Do you think the plugs will be okay to plant in fall and over winter? Be too big, get their heads too cold and die? <laughs> would it be better off to just direct seed them this fall? So wait a minute. I mistakenly purchased. First off, Lombata Minarda is an awesome, I mean, that's the only Minarda that we grow. Um, and it is an annual. It is a hardy annual. I don't know where you are, Lauren, but if you're in zone six, seven, eight, or nine, you can definitely fall planted. Um, but Dave would be the one to ask. I don't know when you ordered it and when your ship date is. They may or may not be willing to let you cancel it, and that may screw up your order for shipping. So I don't know the answer to that. But Minarda Limbata is one of our favorite cool flowers. All right, friends. What is with the floppy necks on sunflowers? I do pro cuts and have not had a good season. So, Helene, it depends on what colors you're, um, yo, I have so many bad bites on my legs. I mean, big bad bites. I'm not sure what it is. Um, depends on what colors you're growing. You know, we've talked about the fact that all of the specialty colors, whether it's pro cuts or others, the chocolates, the bicolors, colors, the whites, those that are not the classic orange um, or yellow sunflowers uh, can have really soft necks. That's just part of them. That's just the way it is. We actually use Quick Dip, which you can find that on our website if you don't have any. Um, it's a hydrating liquid, and this is really technical, but literally we harvest all those specialty colors into one bucket together that has a splash of quick dip in it, and it definitely helps to hydrate them better. Um, but I totally understand, so you wanna be sure they're in the bucket, totally straight, upright, and that you can keep them that way. That means, um, I'm trying to get a bucket, y'all. This is a small one. Um, you know, I use like five or six different, see this bucket? See how narrow and skinny this is? 
we have these size buckets available for those kinds of flowers that have those kinds of situations. So um, I would say definitely try the Pro Cut Orange. That has got the stiffest neck of all of them. I don't know that I've ever had floppy necks with orange, um, but you might try those other steps. And um, hey, so we've got lots of students on here. Thanks for all the sunflowers. I miss you too, Janice. Janice is my good friend in Canada who is a rockin' flower farmer. Janice, oh, right, she said, for those of you that missed it earlier, we were talking about that sunflowers are just a really huge cash crop for us. And the longer, and sunflowers are a little more cold tolerant than what people give them credit for too. So we feel really good about pushing them into fall. Um, you just need to be sure you're giving them food and moisture if you're not getting rain on a regular basis um, because there is nothing like having sunflower bunches to sell at the fall Thanksgiving markets, all of those, because that's your profit. Um, and we like to do, and see that's what Janice is saying, that her sunflowers paid for her entire family of five to fly from Canada to Raleigh, North Carolina to the National Conference um, for our 30th year anniversary, which was like four years ago or something. Um, it's really fun to set goals. I am definitely a goal setter. I like to say, um, you know, when I back, when we were in high production, I mean, first I had to pay for my tractor, which it did. But I love saying things like, all right, I wanna pay extra money on my mortgage this year. My goal is to find 5,000 extra dollars to pay on the mortgage. Or if you're gonna send your kids to private school, <coughs> excuse me, or something like that. It is really fun, really fun. And your family loves that too. All right, friends, oh, Virginia Beach. Hello, Virginia Beach. We have lots of students on here. Okay, in a previous Ask a Flower Farmer, you mentioned you that you, two seeds per block when you do stock, as well as some others. I thought you were suggesting that you plant them that way too, or are you separating them? Um, no, whenever we put more than one seed into a cell or a block, they stay that way. Um, they get planted that way. For instance, Bobo planted kale, and the kale had three seeds, um, and we did that actually in a plug tray, not in a soil block, and one cell was planted in each square, and each cell had three plants. So when we do that, particularly with those plants that are one cuts, kale is one cut, stock is one cut, some of the celosia, Coxcomb um, hybrids, those, you know, green, spring green, Bombay, Neo, Act, all of them are super one single stem. And when you plant them close together, it makes them get taller, uh, but they still produce that awesome head. So it just really depends on what it is. I would never though, now that I just said those Coxcomb names, I would probably never put two, the seed is so expensive. Um, and we plant them eight rows in a, a bed, a 30 inch bed. Um, we basically do that in a different way because the seed costs so much, I'm just afraid to do that. Um, but that's what you're really looking to do. Um, uh, Rhonda from the warehouse is here. She's the one that y'all talk to with your questions and orders when you call up to the, to the warehouse. All right, y'all, we're harvesting in the pouring rain. Oh, Wanda, I am so, so Wanda, hollow, fox hollow peonies in Alaska, y'all. If y'all didn't know it, Alaska is like a major peony exporter now because their peonies are, they bloom in midsummer after all of ours and the states are done and she ships all over. And no, flower farming is not fun in the rain. Done that so many times. All right, y'all, I'm getting to questions. So Jessica, I lost a whole week of seedlings to, or um, seedlings also early in the season. I assumed it was birds at the time. And let me tell you why I'm thinking that perhaps we have so many rabbits here, right? Even with Tucker here chasing them. But it literally, the first night, they only ate like two or three rows but they were perfectly lined and I frankly just didn't pay attention to it. We were overwhelmed and busy and I said, oh look, somebody's nibbling and that's happened in the past and then that's the end of it. Well, 
the next night, they just took the entire tray out, but they didn't even miss one seedling. They mowed them down like somebody literally just cut them down. That's why I think it's a rabbit. Um, birds are a little bit more jump around, but it's a bummer when it happens. It is a total bummer. A hundred degrees, Della, today with terrible smoke. So you must be in um, California maybe or somebody else is on fire. So sorry for the people that are suffering. The people in, this, in the way of the hurricanes. Hurricanes, y'all, and I want to tell you something really heartwarming. You know, we have closed Facebook groups for our courses. And um, students were talking with other students this morning in one of our alumni groups. Um, they were saying, you know, we're right in the path. They're expecting 110 mile an hour winds and tons of rain. I can hardly talk about it, y'all, because it is so hard. I live in Hurricane Alley, too. Um, and they were just asking for prayers from people for everybody in the path. And one of our student alumni, and she's literally taken every course that we have, Jonalyn, um, who lives in Florida, so she is very intimate with um, hurricanes. Um, I actually had her and her husband, Clay, on a, um, an interview, um, and I'll talk to them about their hurricane plan. And we, they talked us through what it is. And you know what the last thing they do before a hurricane comes? Is cut the skins off of their greenhouses. It's just really hard. Anyway, Jonalyn jumped in on that Facebook group and said to the people in the path and said, we are only three hours from you. When it's over, we can come help. It's just pretty amazing. Flower farmers are amazing, y'all. Christy, mine were planted weeks apart and the heat and humidity forced them all at once. That can definitely happen. And Mark, um, who I haven't seen on here, um, was over on Clubhouse, was mentioning that some of his were blooming short. Stress and the heat of 100 degrees can definitely do that. That's why I feel like sometimes it's a little more important to focus. I told Bobo, you know, we might need to water our sunflowers um, if we just don't get more rain in this kind of heat temperatures because it will definitely stress them in to bloom in early so they get out of whack and that's kind of happening to a lot of people. So you're not alone on that. My sunflowers kept rotting in the plug tray. Hmm. Even before they germinated, I have them in peat on a heat mat, too wet, add vermiculite. I, have, I can't imagine that all peat would be good. You need to use a potting mix, which is a mix of peat, vermiculite, and perlite, and then we mix in 50% compost with that. Um, but yeah, never had a rotting problem. Um, that can really, just straight peat could probably hold too much water. Helena, Chantilly snaps get started soon as cool flowers like other snaps. Chantillys are no different than any other snaps. Um, you know, we don't start our snaps until mid-September or so, so in a couple more weeks. Um, but they get started on the same cycle. All right, y'all. How much longer will you sow sunflower seeds? Well, um... So, my first frost is mid-November, so that means mid-October, mid-September. So, mid-September is my 60-day mark if the weather goes as it should, which we know it won't, but you never know. And because we are been having fall longer than we should, I think we're going to sow sunflowers once a week till the end of September. Um, because what's a few seeds and a little bit of time to potentially have bouquets for our members only market and our subscription. I mean, we can push it a whole nother month. Um, that's the profit, right? So we're gonna keep doing it. And if your weather behaves that way, um, then just go for it. All right, so here's a good one. Why do my blocks grow white or green stuff? That's because they're staying wet too much of the time, they're staying consistently wet to be able to grow algae. Will it hurt my seedlings? No, but let me tell you how you prevent that from happening, because it is pretty gross. Um, 
algae and green, green stuff and white stuff can only be maintained with constant moisture. You do not want your soil blocks to stay moist 24 seven. You want them to go through a cycle of you water, I water in the morning, you should water in the morning to give them opportunity to dry, to do most of their drying during the day when they're under lights. Um, but the next morning when I come in to, dry, to, come in to water, they're dry. Your air temperature should be warm enough, the combination of the air temperature and the, any warmth projected from your grow lights should dry out the seedlings. Now you don't want them wilted, and I will say that over on the Learning Center at thegardenersworkshop.com, the Learning Center, all things soil blocking, I'm sorry, the video guide before on the menu, go there, there's a bunch of videos on soil blocking. One of them shows you how to water. Most people don't water thoroughly enough once a day, so they're watering lots of little times throughout the day, and that's causing the problem. You can my room gets up to over 100 degrees sometimes, and I only have to water once a day. Um, but I find that people aren't watering thoroughly enough, and there's a video over the Gardener's Workshop Learning Center video guide, soil blocking group of videos. Go in there and look, um, and there's a video there. But I have not found, I mean, I've certainly grown my fair share of algae, but it's always when I'm watering I'm not paying attention. I'm leaving water in the tray. Um, so we are causing the algae to grow. So you need warmer air temperatures, water thoroughly once a day, not multiple times a day. In my zone, we always seem to get one night of frost, that's us, and freeze in early October that takes out my dahlias, then warms up for a few more weeks. Do I plan my cool flowers according to the first frost, even though it warms back up? You kind of have to. I mean, I'm doing a happy medium. I'm kind of, now your direct seeding timing is much more significant than your transplants because direct seeded crops that you plant out in the garden need some warmth to germinate. You have to get them in the ground while there's still some warm days. What we're looking for is 65 degree nights and warm days. You I mean, you can still be getting hot, but you have to water. So you just have to, you have to play it by ear. I know that doesn't help you very much, Helena, but I will say this, that when you're planting transplants, that's why I, I mean, we, we prefer to always plant transplants and there's only like five or six crops that I direct seed because of this. I can um, late, wait later to plant my transplants because they've already germinated. They're already grown. They just have to sit out there in the garden and grow roots. And I can put a hoop and row cover over them if it gets cold again more than I'm expecting to help them do that. Um, so yes, have plenty of hoops and row covers for all your cool flower beds so that you can manipulate a little bit if you need to. But I would kind of stick with your original plan and maybe just push it back a week or two. And you are not alone. Everybody is facing that. We do, um, this is what happens to us is we'll get a cold snap like the first week in November that will would take out our dahlias and our sunflowers. And there are ways to protect your stuff beyond row covers. I mean, overhead sprinkling, you need to look that up on YouTube. Um, Bob Woolham does that. That's how he keeps his dahlias going for so long. You can use um, overnight or your overhead sprinklers during that two hour window before dawn in the morning, which is when the frost damage happens. Um, because it's the, anyway, I can't talk about all that. There's ways to help protect that if that, ha if that happens to you. You can do it for sunflowers too. Katie, obviously I trust your book, but <laughs> I was shocked to see such differences in hardiness zones. Johnny says Rudbeckias are 9 to 10. What are your thoughts on this? Well, first off, Johnny's, I mean, I've done interviews for them and my stuff is on their website. I mean, the interview with Deborah, I mean, articles and things. Um, the cool season, this is why I had to write this book, y'all. The cool season, hardy annual, optimal planting times were lost decades ago for a lot of reasons that I'm not gonna go into right now, except that 
people, everybody used to have a garden, and as people started buying plants at the store, they kind of forgot about this group and their awkward planting time. And a lot of people don't know that many, most of these cool season hardy annuals are in fact, I mean, we, we're living it, are winter hardy. So I don't have an explanation for that, but I will tell you that Rudbeckias, in our experience, are actually winter hardy up to zone five. I think it actually says that in Cool Flowers. Um, we have people that fall plant them in zone five, six, seven, and eight, and they winter over beautifully, and that makes them bloom months earlier. Um, but that's part of the problem is that there's just inconsistent information and their information is based on what's available. Do you want to know where I found the references for cool flowers? In like 50 year and older garden books, literally. I mean, do y'all go back have to twist the publisher's arm? I mean, I didn't have any backup to a lot of my information except to say, I've been doing this for 15 years. I've been growing this stuff over winters and my winters were colder back then. Um, so, yeah, I, I understand, and I appreciate you asking that, Katie. Um, but that is really just part of the confusion, and that's one of the reasons we started packaging. We don't save seed. We buy seed like every other seed-selling company does. We all buy our seeds from seed houses. Some people grow and save seeds, but not many, um, because that's a huge endeavor in itself. Um, but we, all, we struggled with what are we putting on our seed packets? You know, we had to produce and print our own seed packets so we could put our growing instructions because there is a lot of inconsistencies out there. And I understand why they're there because overall, the information is really wild, a wide range. It's pretty crazy. Helena, what is the trick to getting Rudbeckia to germinate and grow well? Well, first off, Rudbeckia is super slow. So there's a lot of ways to kill and rot the seed while you're waiting for it to germinate, you know? So that's one thing. Um, first off, it also is really kind of not picky. It can either be on the surface or be covered a little bit. It can go really either way, but it is really slow. We have found that those types of seeds really benefit um, from us sowing them on the surface firmly and then laying the wide weave burlap on top of them so it retains that moisture where they are but it still allows light and oxygen to get in so it's just be patient but rudbeckias we'll probably start our rudbeckias next week um, because it is you want to just pull your blooming hair out i totally understand all right guys Oh, we're over time. I'm running my mouth. Zone 7, 8. We have poor germination on our sunflowers. Our room is 85 and put on a seedling heat mat, but are still maybe 50% germination. We're using the compost and 50-50. Um, so, yes. Who am I talking to? Christine. Dependent on the type of heat mat you have, if it has a built-in thermostat, which is what means you don't have a thermostat to actually adjust, it's in the mat itself, then at 85 degrees in your room, that mat is heating up 15 to 20 degrees warmer than the room temperature, so you are literally toasting part of your seeds. I mean, they're struggling, obviously. Um, so if, if you have a thermostat on your heat mat, then that could be something else. But I would say that um, because the heat mats with thermostats are really, really high dollar, you know, much more expensive heat mats. Most of us have the built-in ones. Um, but so you want to get a room temperature of about 70 degrees, and that'll make your heat mat heat up to 85 degrees. So that may be it. When I plant my sunflowers like this, filling trays with soil, place seeds on cell, pressing as deep as it lets me, and then water, my seeds don't get covered and I have to go back and add soil. Um, so using a mix of peat, cocoa core, and a little perlite and compost, no, you're not an idiot. Um, so what may be happening is the fact that it's too fluffy 
And so what a lot of people do is after they fill one of their trays is to put another tray on top of it and just press it down and then put some more soil in before you even start. So there just may not be enough. It's too fluffy, basically, is what I'm saying to you. There's not enough there, substance there, to cover it. That's why, y'all, it's just easier for me to buy a bale of Pro Mix or whatever, um, a big bale like peat moss comes, and then just mix it with 50-50 compost in a huge baby swimming pools are great for that too, by the way. And then put it in like a big galvanized trash can and just scoop it out each week. All that measuring business and mixing, you, you've got, once you get busy, you just won't have time for all that. All right, this is my last question. Anne, for starting cool flowers, would you start your seeds three to four weeks before your planting date if you were using soil blocker, but six to eight weeks if using a cell? See, that's a very good question. Yes, plug trays definitely grow slower in general than soil blocks. I mean, it's painful for me. Um, after being used to, you know, our zinnias at two weeks, our celosi at four weeks, being a gorgeous five-inch tall transplant in a cell waiting six to eight weeks. Um, so, yes, you're dead on the money. All right, friends, I am out of here. Thanks for joining me. And um, remember, you can find me on Wednesdays, 11.30 a.m. Instagram Live, Ask a Flower Farmer. 1 o'clock on Clubhouse, um, and this week, I'm sorry I didn't look, not this week, but next week I have a special guest, Val, is coming to talk about her Amaryllis and Paper White um, new online course. She is packed with information, y'all. She just oozes that stuff. Um, so, thanks so much for joining me here. Until we meet again, thegardenersworkshop.com. We have all the supplies, all the resources, everything you need to become a better gardener and a better farmer, y'all. Ciao.